On this edition of News Team Boulder, the University of Colorado announces a shift to remote learning for a two-week stint with tributes to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, plus what to do if you confront unexpected wildlife. All of that and more coming up next. From the Roser Atlas Center and the College of Media, Communication and Information, this is News Team Boulder. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on the first day of autumn. I'm Christina Robin. Today's top story is a carbon copy of CU Boulder's policy set in the spring. That's correct, classes are removed entirely remote for the next two weeks. News team's Reed Radachonsky is reporting live on campus. The University of Colorado Boulder has made the decision to switch to remote learning due to an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases. The news comes shortly after a two-week self-quarantine order came from the university and public health officials. CU officials have designated the Williams Village dorm as a quarantine zone. Students living here have been moved out and relocated in order to open more space for quarantining students. Large gatherings right here on the hill are linked to the rise in COVID-19 cases among students that go to the University of Colorado. Any student linked to one of these large gatherings on the hill will be suspended for up to 10 days by the university. Police and CU health officials are taking this extremely seriously, so caution be warned when coming up to the hill. Reed Rashonsky, News Team Boulder. America has surpassed a grim milestone today for what was once the unthinkable. Coronavirus deaths jumped to over 200,000 in the U.S. That's more than the total U.S. battle deaths from a combination of the last five wars. The death toll is nearing one million worldwide since the first reported death on February 6th. While deaths skyrocket, CU Boulder COVID cases de-escalate. On-campus testing reached a peak of 130 positive tests last week and is now back down to around 90. Chancellor Philip DiStefano wrote an email urging students to maintain a safe and healthy environment. But how much responsibility can socially starved college students handle during a pandemic? CU Boulder's plan to prevent COVID cases is stirring some anger among Boulder residents. The community is speaking out on Twitter. Some residents are advising people to avoid visiting the Hill and Target. Many residents are blaming CU Boulder administration for the increase in cases. Up next, the Supreme Court justice who touched the lives of millions. Stay tuned. Colorado is a wonderful state. We have sweeping plains, lively cities, and the Rocky Mountains. We also have the flu. Flu can be serious. Last year, nearly 5,000 Coloradoans were hospitalized with flu. That's the population of Breckenridge. The flu vaccine can keep you at work, in school, and out of the hospital. Flu vaccines save lives. Do yourself, your community, and all Coloradoans a favor and keep enjoying wonderful Colorado. Get your flu vaccine today. Tributes continue to pour in for Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Over the weekend, some New York subway signs were altered to say Ruth Street, like this one, which usually reads 50th Street. Ginsburg, a Brooklyn native, died on Friday from cancer. Artist Adrian Wilson and Matt Duncan collaborated to honor her. They say they taped over the street names with vinyl adhesive that doesn't cause permanent damage to the walls. On Saturday night, seven signs turned into Ruth Street. Wilson says by Sunday night, they were all gone. Judge Amy Coney Barrett appears to be President Trump's overwhelming favorite to replace the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's according to several people familiar with the deliberations who say the president's view was solidified at a White House meeting Monday. Barrett is currently sitting on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit in Chicago. Judge Barbara Lagoa also remains on Trump's list. But several people familiar with the matter have said Trump is fading on the idea of picking her. Trump says he will announce his pick Saturday at the White House. Ginsburg's empty seat has become a political lightning rod, with Republicans vowing to approve President Trump's nominee. 
Democrats argue that it is hypocritical after the Republicans blocked President Obama's nominee in an election year. Colorado's Republican Senator Cory Gardner weighed in with a statement saying, I have and will continue to support judicial nominees who will protect our Constitution, not legislate from the bench and uphold the law. Should a qualified nominee who meets this criteria be put forward? I will vote to confirm. Gardner is in a tough Senate race with former Governor John Hickenlooper. 538 says Hickenlooper is up by seven against Cory Gardner. After Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's passing, people are wondering how the United States government will be filling the seat vacancy as the presidential election grows closer. News team's Chloe Henson breaks down for us the Supreme Court Justice election process. With the untimely passing of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Senate must now fill her seat with a new nominee. But how does a candidate become a Supreme Court Justice? The President kicks off this process by first nominating his choice of candidate for the vacant seat. This nomination will then move to the Senate for a vote, needing 51 out of 100 Senators' votes to pass. Today, Voting in a new Supreme Court justice can take as long as two to three months. Senators opposed to the candidate can start a filibuster, which drags out the decision until a supporter invokes a closure, which then forces a vote within 30 hours. Under Trump's presidency in 2017, it was decided that a simple majority vote would declare the candidate approved or disapproved. If there's a tie, the vice president would break it. In the past, it's taken around 70 days to fill a Supreme Court justice seat. We're currently 42 from the election. Some are saying that because it's so close, this should wait until after. A president's Supreme Court nominee usually coincides with their ideals and platforms. Trump is trying to push his through before Election Day. Before her death, Ruth Bader Ginsburg declared to her granddaughter that her, quote, most fervent wish is that I will not be replaced until a new president is installed. Keep up with News Team Boulder for the latest. Up in the mountains, signs of winter are on the horizon as the aspen leaves start to turn. But excitement for the ski season is replaced with questions. News Team's Kylie Westhoff is on the slopes with more. A ski resort often feels more like a ghost town in the off season, waiting for the excitement that comes with the snow. But this year especially, it feels like all of Beaver Creek is holding its breath for what this ski season will bring. The COVID-19 outbreak in March has left many mountain workers' livelihoods hanging in the balance. Sunday, lunch, Restaurant owner Don Bird is among those scaling the slippery slope to keep his business going. In my wildest dreams, thought I was going to be researching in my restaurant career masks, face masks, you know, heavy-duty disinfectants. You know, all of the things that we had to do uh, to get ready for this. Don's hard work won't mean much if the resort doesn't figure out how to safely get skiers on the mountain. I mean, that's our goal for the whole summer, to be able to ski this winter. How are we going to make it? I think we still have a lot of things to figure out. Ski instructor Frederick Gustafsson said the determination to reopen is there, but some of the answers are not. It's going to be a different situation i think we'll see less people on the hill per day um, but the snow is still coming the obstacles for the resort are already plentiful but the pandemic has raised yet another concern i'm pretty sure we have a lot of colleagues who can't return and a lot of guests who cannot get here either uh, as as of now there's no one really who can get here from europe people may not realize the importance that foreign workers and guests have on the mountains business this season, with work and travel visas restricted amid the pandemic, the mountain may experience difficulties staffing the resort, as well as a loss of revenue generated by foreign visitors. Struggles on the slopes will not necessarily remain on the slopes. A slow ski season can hurt the whole state. The Colorado Office of Economic Development cites tourism as a top industry. And with the most important time for income rapidly approaching, the pressure is on for this season. About, um about 60% of your yearly gross sales happen between Thanksgiving and the first week in April. I'm still praying for that good winter because that's, that's the biggest challenge yet to come. With hopes and dreams on the line this season, I'm Kylie Westhoff, News Team Boulder.
Resort workers are optimistic that social distancing on the mountain will be effective, but the questions remain. Will visitors be able to attend? And how do you maintain safety off of the hill? We will find out come November. In the meantime, we'll be tracking weather to make sure ski season will see plenty of powder. Stick around. He seemed fine to me. I thought he would just sleep it off. I didn't think he was that bad. I had no idea he was taking prescription drugs. He only drank as much as me. I was fine. We didn't want to get in trouble. I thought this kind of thing happened all the time. I thought someone else was taking care of him. If I would have called. 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 If I would have just called. I'd still be alive. Welcome back to News Team Boulder. Let's take a look at your weather. Right now, outside, it's kind of hazy. That's because of those fires that we're seeing. You have the Pine Gulch Fire over in Grand Junction. That's the largest fire in Colorado history. That's doing quite a lot of damage. And then we have the Cameron Peak Fire up near Fort Collins. They have some mandatory evacuations going on there, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Looking at air quality, though, here in Boulder, 60, that's moderate, that's not bad, that's not great, but it's okay. Tomorrow, northwesterly winds will make it a little worse, so be on the lookout for that. Right now, the temperatures here in Colorado looking pretty nice, 83 here in Boulder, 85 in Grand Junction, 85 also in Fort Collins. Nationally, the temperatures in places you expect to be warm are warm, like in Los Angeles in the 80s, Arizona in the 100s, here in Miami, they're also in the 80s. But the Gulf Coast has just been getting hammered with tropical storms. They are out of letters to name their storms, so we're onto the Greek alphabet. You can see Tropical Storm Beta right here, and there's some video of flooding in Texas. That's where they're expecting about 20 inches of rain, and you see this guy on a kayak. That looks pretty fun, right? Not so fun with all the damage that's going on there, though. Here in Colorado, though, we're seeing this high pressure system that's hanging out, bringing us clear skies for most of the day. There is some moisture and some instability, so that'll give us a chance for some thunderstorms. So this afternoon, uh, we could see some thunderstorms, high of 83, low of 56. Moving on to tomorrow, it'll clear out. We have sun, high of 83, low of 54. But remember, we have that haze that'll stick around for most of the day tomorrow. Let's zoom out to the four-day forecast. Thursday and Friday looking about the same, 87 degrees, that's a nice high. We'll cool off a little bit for Saturday. The clouds will come out, we'll get to a high of about 76, but take a look at that low, 48. That'll get quite chilly. So on Saturday, I wouldn't cancel your plans, Christina. I don't expect any precipitation, but it will be a little cooler, so be mindful of that. Thanks, Vinay. That means that we can make our weekly trip up to Chautauqua. But first, let's get some bear safety tips. Up next. Navigating careers can feel like a chain of roadblocks and wrong turns. As a job seeker, you want more than a paycheck. As an employer, you want the right talent. If you're looking to discover your unique path to success, Talent Found can help you get there. Whether you're a student exploring career pathways, a job seeker looking to change direction, or an employer working to build a stronger team, Talent Found empowers Coloradans on your employment adventure. Visit talentfound.org. With the mounting stress of school and the pandemic, News Team wants to remind students their options for mental health support. Quarantine and isolation can make it difficult to stay connected with others. The university provides mental health resources from the Counseling and Psychiatric Services, or CAPS office, is offering a free virtual COVID-19 workshop series. CAPS is also available for online counseling or crisis sessions. If you or your friends are struggling, contact the CAPS office for free mental health services. What is digging through the trash on the hill? Raccoons are a common suspect. But this time, it looks like a bear is the culprit for this mess. Just this morning, the bear has been frequenting the alleyway behind 10th and College for midnight snacks. Remember, if you encounter a bear, do not feed it, keep your trash cans locked, and take extra care with bird feeders, and call 911 to report the sighting. Renters are responsible for cleaning the trash left by wildlife. Otherwise, they can expect a fine. So, maybe start bringing bear spray along with your mask. 
We will leave you today with some scenes around our campus, a little quieter than usual, but just as beautiful. Stay safe and have a great day.